Hey guys, BD here at the Season 10 premiere of The Walking Dead. I'm with Mr. Seth Gilliam, you know him as Father Gabriel. First I want to talk to you, man, just about, for you personally, how do things change? You're, you've been with the show half as long as it's been on now. Yes. When you return to set, when you're t it's time to go to Atlanta and get to work again, how does it change for you each year? Was anything different for the 10th year? Um, no, my routine remains the same in, pre in preparing for the for the for coming in and doing the seasons. It's mostly just the material that's very different. You know? So then what would you say, by comparison to recent seasons, we had the Negan stuff when you were a couple years in, when you and Jeff got to have some fun scenes together, and now it's kind of different. We have a threat that's quietly in the background, not as in your face as Negan and the Saviors. What kind of tone, what kind of stuff can people expect from the different material? Uh, a good deal of tension, a good deal of anxiety, um, a good deal of trauma. All right. Now, uh, I, I've got to ask you, look, in the comics, when the Whisperer War kicks off, mm -hmm. I think you know what happens to Father Gabriel. It's, it's pretty brutal. For Father Gabriel when the Whisperer show up. So yeah. as we approach that, and you're five years into working here, do you kind of get a little bit nervous? Because I feel like that's part of the job here, is getting that call eventually. Mm -hmm. Do you get a little nervous, or do you kind of want to make sure that that's the way he goes? No, I, uh, I don't get nervous about it. I mean, you know, no, no day is promised to anyone, you know. Um, so... You know, when it happens, it happens. Um, I want Father Gabriel's exit from the show to be operatic. And I think his death in the comic books is definitely that. I don't know if I'm ready to see you go like that. Like, that's tough acting. Yeah, that's hanging upside down, that's screaming. A that's a tough day on set. Yeah. And you guys, I mean, there are former actors on the show who have become directors now, like Cudlitz directed a couple episodes this season, yes, right? Did. What's it like to kind of go from being a co-star with them to having them kind of guiding you through an episode it's exciting it's like watching your big brother make you know the transition from the junior varsity to the you know to the pros in a way you know you're cheering them on um, you already have a relationship with them that's established so it's a, the comfort level is there and the trust is there and uh, and Cutlass did a fantastic job he's got fantastic enthusiasm he knows the material he knows the characters I'm excited for his episodes awesome and I'm not gonna tell anybody what you say here but uh Where's Rick Grimes? <laughs> I wish I knew where Rick Grimes is. I think there'll be some movies that will. <laughs> and I've got, I've got one more thing. Uh, do you miss Spider-Man as much as everyone else does? Do I miss Spider-Man as much as everyone else does? I don't understand the question. Spider-Man can't be in the Marvel movies anymore. It's a hot topic. Are you, are you sad about it? I didn't know that. Um, Spider-Man was my favorite character. That, that sucks. So does that mean no more Spider-Man movies? Well, it's only Sony can make him. He can't be with the Avengers anymore. Well, you know what? He doesn't need the Avengers anyway. You know what I mean? Hot he's take. Always been, he's always been a solo superhero in my mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keeping the neighborhood safe. I love it. Well, thank you, man. Good seeing you. Good seeing you too. Have fun, dude.